Okay, good evening. Welcome to Math for Kids number 67. 67. Today is going to be our last video, for at least for now, on continued fractions and Pell's equation. We're going to look at the equation x squared minus 13y squared equals 1. And we know from, oh, and by the way, if you're just watching this video for the first time, we started on Math for Kids 63. This is sort of a week-long excursion into Pell's equation and continued fractions. So when we see x squared minus 13, y squared equals 1, we know we probably have to look at the continuing fraction of the square root of 13, right? Yeah. And rather than trying to calculate that using our method for calculating continued fraction of square roots, which is... Split, flip, rat. Split, flip, rat. Split, flip, rat. Use Mathematica. Also, you can use Mathematica. <laughs> Mathematica is faster, but split, flip, rat is the way to go, you know, to make sure you understand what you're doing. So we can see that the continued fraction of the square root of 13, however you want to calculate it, is square root of 13 equals 3 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1. So you keep getting four ones and a 6, and it repeats. And the 3 only at the top. Yeah, and the 3 is only at the top. Well, it turns out for these kind of square roots, the first number is always half of the number where it starts repeating. Yeah. Which is actually kind of neat, if you think about it. There's no real reason why that should be true, but it turns out to be true. So, to do this, what we found for a lot of our continued fractions is you, you put them into your continued fraction machine, calculate the convergence, and right here, right before it starts repeating, should give us a solution to x squared minus 13y squared equals 1. But square root of 13 has got a little surprise for us. So let's do this math. Let's put it in. Let's put it in. Okay, so now make sure you reach long so you're not blocking. 3 times 1 plus 0 is? 3. 3, three times 0 plus 1 is? 1. 1 times 3 plus 1 is? 4. Okay, back up a little. 1 times 1 plus 0 is? 1. Good. 1 times 4 plus 3 is? 7. 7. 1 times 1 plus 1 is? 2. Two, awesome. This sort of looks like a Fibonacci numbers. Well, let's see. Well, remember, we do have a lot of ones. Um, one times seven plus four is? Eleven. One times two plus one is? It's three. Awesome. Still continuing. Still looking like Fibonacci. Interesting. One times eleven plus seven is? It's eighteen. Eighteen. One times three plus two is? Five. It's still looking. So it looks a lot like Fibonacci. Okay, hey, we got to eighteen fifths. So let's see if 18 fifths gives us a solution to this equation. So these fractions along the way are supposed to become better and better approximations for the square root of 13. So maybe we'll just take, take a minute and start at the beginning. Is 3 over 1 approximately equal to the square root of 13? Let's put 3. Let's square it. So 9, does 9 approximately equal 13? Remember the square root of 13 squared is 13. Kind of. Kind of. It's off by four, so that's not a great approximation. You have to start somewhere. Oh, you, but you do have to start somewhere. You don't have to lose your cap. <laughs> you don't have to lose your cap. Does four, maybe this is a better approximation to the square root of 13. Let's see. Well, What's four squared, or four over one squared? It's going to be 16. Does 16 approximately equal 13? It's off by negative three. It's off by, it's off by three. Yeah, it's not great, but maybe. Let's see about 7 halves. The 7 halves approximately equal the square root of 13. Well, it's, we have to do four, it's 49 fourteenths, but that... 49... That's not 49 it's, seven No, two fourths. 49 fourths. Does this approximately equal 13? Well, we'd have to multiply the 4 over here, right? Yeah. So does 49 approximately equal 13 times 4? 13 times 4 is... Is gonna be it's gonna be forty, but it's fifty-two. Fifty-two. It's kind of close. Getting close. So seven halves is actually maybe a decent approximation to the square root of thirteen. How about no? How about eleven over three? Hmm. Eleven thirds. Eleven thirds. Before we get to our solution, that should be we hope a solution to that equation. Eleven thirds. Does this approximately equal the square root of thirteen? Well, eleven squared is one twenty-one. One twenty-one. Three squared nine. is nine. Does this approximately equal square, uh, 13? Well, we multiply both sides by 9, and we say, well, if this approximately equals 13, then 121 should approximately equal 
13 times 9. 90. This is 90 plus, plus 27, which is 117. 117. Not bad. A decent approximation. Decent approximation. So, what about 18 fifths? Let's see oh, what 18 solve. fifths. Okay, interesting. Let's see if this solves our equation. So we're hoping that 18 squared minus 13 times 5 squared equals 1. So let's see, 18, you know what 18 squared is? No. Sorry, I jumped, I jumped ahead of myself. We're hoping that 18 over 5 is approximately equal to the square root of 13. Well, I'll tell you what 18 squared is. It's 324. Did you, did you know that? No. No? No. Okay, well, even Mathematica knows that 18 squared is true too. But Mathematica knows a lot of things, right? Yeah, no, so this is 324 is. over 25, because 5 squared is 25. You knew that, right? Does this approximately equal 13? Well, let's do 25 times 13. Do you want to write out 25 times 13? Does 324 approximately equal 13 times 25? And 13 times 25 is? 250 plus 25 times 3. It's going to be 60 plus 15 is going to be 75. Okay, which is, so when you... Just 3, 25. So does 324 approximately equal 325? That's a good approximation. Okay, so 18 squared is 324. Hey, look, they differ by 1, just like we were thinking. So look at this. 18 squared, which is 324, minus 13 times 5 squared, which is 325. 324 minus 325 equals 1. That doesn't seem right. What do you mean it doesn't seem right? Uh, uh. Well, 324 minus, it's negative 1. Oh, no, it's negative 1. Wait a minute. All this time we've been doing this and stopping where it started repeating. Wow. Ah! Well, let's go to where it starts repeating again. Oh, they differ by one, but this time it doesn't solve our equation. Erg. Well, looks, we have to go to the next one. Yeah, we do have to go to the next one. And you know what? Just to save time, I actually wrote down what the, what the convergence are. So the next one's 119 over 33. There goes the Fibonacci number pattern. Yeah, no more Fibonacci. 137 over 38, looks like. 256 over 71. 393 over 109. Getting big. And, um, let's see, 649 over 180. Uh -huh. 649 over 180. So now we're wondering if 649 over 180 is approximately the square root of 13. Well, you know what 649 squared is? No. What? You don't? Well, nope. it turns out that, that 649 squared is 421,201. 180 squared. You know what 180 squared is? No. Well, it's 32,400. Does this approximately equal 13? Well, if it does, that would mean 421,201 was about equal to 13 times 32,400. Well, and of course, you know that 32,400 times 13 is what? I don't know. It's 421,200. So look, 649 squared, oops. 649 squared minus 13 times 180 squared. Well, 649 squared is 421,201 minus 13 times 180 squared, which is 421,200, does in fact equal 1. So, most of the time when you have a nice, happy little integer and you take, you're trying to solve Pell's equation, most of the time you do the continued fraction and you calculate in your continued fraction machine, you calculate the convergence up to where it starts repeating. But every now and then, for some numbers, instead of getting a solution to this squared minus this squared equals 1, you get a solution to this squared minus this squared equals minus 1. So you actually have to go all the way out to the next one. So here's a funny thing. Okay, You want to know something that, that math, math people have figured out? What? There's always a solution when it equals 1. Always. So either you go to the first time it repeats or the second time it repeats, but either way you're going to find a solution to it equals 1. 
Yeah. But it not always the case that there's a solution when it's negative one. In fact, that's kind of the exception. And I don't even know myself if they know for sure when there's a solution to one. They probably do. I just don't, I myself don't know. But I just wanted to show you this, so this is pretty neat. So we've been working on solving really simple equations, like x, x plus 4 equals 9. Yeah. That's what we've been learning about. But here's a more complicated equation that we just spent a week studying called Pell's equation. And I showed you how to solve this one too. Which one do you think is easier to solve, this one or this one? <laughs> right, what's the solution to this? x equals 5. Do you need continued fractions? No. No, this one you do. Okay, hey, great job this week. That was Pell's equation. Cool. I'm going to ask you to do it.